Hello and welcome to the fifth video of the FP2 chapter Polar Coordinates. On the screen, two quick starter questions to get us going. If you've got time, pause the video and answer these. What is the formula for the area of a sector of a circle? In polar form, we are always using radians, so I'm going to do this in radians. And we take the area of a circle, pi r squared, and multiply it by the angle that we want as a proportion of the full circle. So theta out of the full circle, 2 pi radians cancel all the pi's and we can write this as a half r squared theta and that is the area of a sector of a circle where theta is an angle given in radians. What is the trapezium rule used for? The trapezium rule is used to estimate the area under a curve in x y Cartesian form. So if we've got some function here what you can do is split the area underneath this curve into trapezia in order to estimate the area. And these bits here, of course, are the trapezium's height in the trapezium area formula, but this is a change in x, and as these trapezia get smaller and smaller and smaller, they become infinitesimal, we call it delta x, and it turns into an integration. We're going to use both of these together in this video to talk about how we find the area under polar curves. And that's because we're basically going to use the same idea as that trapezium rule there, taken to its limit. However, rather than a trapezium, we will be using a sector. So if we've got a curve like this, you can see going from here to this point, that will have some angle, alpha. From here to this point, that will be some other angle, beta. And as the two get closer and closer and closer together, the arc gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and it approximates the sector of a circle. Even though on this scale, it obviously isn't a sector of a circle because of the curvature of the arc here coming around. But as they get closer and closer together, it can be approximated as a sector. The area of the sector we just saw was a half r squared theta. So as this becomes an infinitesimal arc, and the angle alpha and beta get closer and closer together in the limit, we can turn this into an integral, summing these sectors as theta changes. Obviously the half can come outside of the integral. We're going from theta is equal to the lower limit to the upper limit. We are integrating with respect to theta, and r squared, of course, will be a function that depends on theta. So whatever your function is, you substitute that in here, square it, and then integrate with respect to theta. A couple of things to note. Here, first of all, you're used to this underneath the x-axis producing what would be a negative area. You have to be very careful with that when you're integrating with respect to x. But that's not the case in polar form. We're going from an angle round to another angle. So we can have area underneath the x-axis because we're not in xy, we're in r theta. So as that goes around, all of this will come out as a nice positive answer. What you do need to be careful of, though, is any sections where r is going to give you a negative answer. We've talked about this quite a lot. Anywhere where r is negative, you should not draw it, even though some graphing apps will draw it. In the same way, you should not include regions where r is giving you a negative value when you're integrating. For example, if you wanted to do cos 2 theta, you have a loop here and a loop here, but if you just integrated all the way around from 0 to 2 pi, it would include the negative here and here. What you would do is just integrate for this loop and then double it. Or you would have to consider the limits from here to here and then from here to here for the second loop over here. So that's something to be careful of. Usually what I would suggest is to do what I just said, focus on one loop. And then because each loop in your graphs at this level are likely to be the same, you just multiply that by however many loops you need. Last thing to note before we go into some examples is that you will probably find these two identities very, very useful. Because we're talking about graphs like this, where we're going to have sine thetas and cosine thetas. And then we're going to square it as part of the formula to find the area. And integrating this is not very nice. Integrating this is much nicer. So I'll be using these, I think, in every example I do in this video and probably in the next video as well. Okay, that's it for the 
notes. Basically, you just need to remember this and some ideas of how to apply it and where not to apply it. First example, find the area within one loop of r equals cos 3 theta. We've got a little graph here to help us off, but we're going to need to know the limits. This line and this line. A couple of ways you can approach this. You could think about the different sections on the graph where these are going to be positive. There'll be one here, there won't be one here, then there will be one over here, there won't be one over here, there will be one down here, there won't be one over here. You can do it like that and split your graph into however many sections you need. But what might be easier is just to say when is this radius equal to zero? Because when the radius is zero, that's where we start this loop. It's also where we finish this loop. And while it's where you start the other loops as well, it will be pretty obvious from the answers you get which one is this one and this one. If you do that, you find that this is pi by 6 and this is minus pi by 6. So my limits from minus pi by 6 to pi by 6. However, a quick little hint here, you don't need to do this. If you're happier with what we just said there, stick with it but it can give you some slightly nicer numbers to use if you go from the zero line, the initial line, because you get more zeros in your calculation. And because of the symmetry, you can just go from here to here, from zero to pi by six, and then double it. And that's what I'm going to do. Theta equals zero here. I'll call this region R, capital R, and then the area that I'm looking for is equal to 2 times r. So r is equal to a half times the integral from 0 to pi by 6 of r, which is cos 3 theta squared integrated with respect to theta. To make this a little bit easier for myself, I'm going to do a equals 2r now because this half and this 2 will nicely cancel out. If I change this now into a, that will equal to 2 times this, which is from 0 to pi by 6, the integral of cos squared 3 theta d theta. As we had on the previous screen, this is going to be easier to integrate if I change cos squared into a half plus a half cos 2 theta, but it won't be 2 theta because we already have 3 theta and it's 2 times this whole angle here, so that will be 6 theta d theta from 0 to pi by 6 which is fairly easy. Theta over 2 plus 1 over 12 sine 6 theta from 0 to pi by 6. And that's quite nice. The numbers are working out here nicely because 6 times pi by 6 is pi and sine of pi is 0. And of course, the sine of 0 here is also 0. So both of the sine terms are going to become 0. So we get pi by 6 over 2, so that's pi by 12 plus 0, minus this 0 here is also 0, plus 0. So I hope you can see that using the initial line theta equals 0 has made this part here easier. And that is just going to equal pi by 12, which is the area of one loop of the r equals cos 3 theta curve. Second and final example, the figure shows a curve C with polar equation r equals 4a cos 2 theta. That's this one here. Going from theta is equal to 0, the initial line, up to theta equals pi by 4, which is about here, and that's where the curve comes back down and has a radius 0 again. And a line m here, with polar equation theta equals pi by 8. The shaded region is bounded by c and m. Use calculus to show that the area of the shaded region is this. Although the question here has a lot more words and looks longer, this is actually slightly easier because we already have the boundaries given to us of the region. We want from here, which we know is theta equals pi by 8, to the end of this curve as it comes down here. This angle here is the upper angle of the curve here. So we're going from pi by 8 to pi by 4, and we're integrating curve. So let's be clear here that this is slightly different to what you're used to on an xy coordinate. Normally you would integrate under the curve 
and then have to subtract this triangle here. But in this case, you're not doing that. It's integrating each of these tiny little sectors from the pole out to the curve as we go around. So it doesn't integrate any of this. We don't need to subtract any of this. We just go from this angle to this angle, and that's it. So here, our area is equal to a half times the integral from pi by 8 to pi by 4 of r squared. And r is this thing here. So if we square that, we get 16 a squared cos squared 2 theta with respect to theta. The 16 a squared is just a constant, so I'm going to pull that out and put it with the half. So that gives me 8 a squared, the integral pi by 8 to pi by 4 of cos squared 2 theta. So again, I'm going to use that identity and change that into a half plus a half cos 2 of the angle. And the angle is 2 theta, so that becomes 4 theta d theta. Then we go ahead and integrate this. So we've still got the a squared and the 8 outside. We get theta over 2 plus 1 eighth sine 4 theta from pi by 8 to pi by 4. Putting in those limits, 8a squared theta pi by 4 over 2 is pi by 8 plus 1 eighth of sine 4 times pi by 4 gives me a pi, and sine of pi is a 0, so we get 0 there, minus the lower limit. Pi by 8 over 2 is pi by 16, plus 1 over 8 times by sine of 4 times pi by 8 is pi by 2, sine of pi by 2 is 1, so that's 1 over 8. Tidying this up, we get 8 a squared times by pi by 8 minus pi by 16 is pi by 16. And we've got minus 1 over 8. And then if I factorize out 1 over 16, that gives us the result we need. a squared over 2, or a half a squared, times pi, and taking out 1 over 16 leaves a 2 there, as required in the question. I hope that's enough to give you an idea of what's going on here and how to do these sorts of questions. We do need to take it further by considering polar curves that overlap, but I'm going to put that in a separate video. So you can now practice using questions 1 to 4 specifically from exercise 8c, and we'll look at the rest in the next video. Maybe I'll see you there.